Oh. Oh. <laughs> was that a fish on there? Um, I think it still is. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fish. Well, <laughs> that was a 10 pound hook set for a 10 ounce bass. <laughs> Welcome to Retro Bassin. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Retro Bassin kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin. So we are back out on Lake Bass Drop today. It is early November and we are doing a little fall bass fishing. Not too long ago I had a pretty good day on the lake using an old school sluggo and it got me thinking about some of the other vintage baits in that category. I remember there were some other ones that uh, sort of came out around the same time as the sluggo to take part in that soft plastic jerkbait craze. Tom Mann had one, I think it was called the Pogo Snail. There's the Power Slug. Well, today we've got two different baits from Culprit that I've actually not fished before. We've got the Culprit Jerkworm and the Culprit Bait Darter. When it comes to Culprit, for the most part, I'm generally fishing that Culprit Worm. So I've never actually fished with these two baits, so I don't know how they're gonna compare to the Sluggo. Um, I'm imagining they probably fish pretty similar. Now, if they're anything like a culprit though, that plastic tends to be a little bit softer, so these might have a slightly more supple action in the water. There you go. <laughs> Brandon's got one. Nice. Well, the old bait darter got one too, huh? There are some bigger fish. Oh, oh my God. Oh my gosh. That's a better one. Son. Woo. That. Oh man, okay. Now that is a nice, nice bass drop bass. So how did he hit? Harder. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, awesome, man. Woo, pretty one. Look at that, that's a solid little two pounder. Yeah. That was fun. So, so now that we've got the old jerk shad versus the bait daughter, I'm hoping I didn't pick the wrong one right out of the gates. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon was just commenting that we have some A-reel. I feel like every time he and I fish, we're really good on the B-reel um, and, and the C-reel. The A-reel just uh, doesn't come very well. <laughs> All right, let's get back in there. Was he, by the way, was he close to the reeds? Uh, he came 20 feet off the reeds, but I, I brought it back through the reeds. So. Okay. So look at this. We've got some scattered reeds up here. Yeah. Right here is the spot, dude. Oh. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, here's one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. lost him. 
No, it was a weed. You even called that cast. <laughs> Son of a gun. That was a nice fish. It wasn't as nice as yours, but that was a nice fish. Oh, you got one, huh? Oh, you got one. Oh! <laughs> Wait. It was a weed. <laughs> Did you retro that one as well? It was a weed. <laughs> well, that looks like a two-pound weed to me. When I grew up fishing this bait, one of the hardest things for me was the hook set. Uh, I missed a lot of fish on it back then, and I guess today as well. So this is truly a retro. It's a nostalgic. <laughs> it's a nostalgic kind of day. <laughs> Got a fish? I do. Oh my god. All right. Oh my god, this is giant. What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh my gosh. Come here. Come here. Come here, man. Wow, that is a beautiful largemouth bass. That is a probably a solid little two pounder right there. I thought he was a lot bigger. He got deep in the reeds when I hit him. Um, but there he is. Uh, another nice one on the old jerkworm. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty fish, isn't it? Really pretty. Let me see. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Really pretty fish. <laughs> nice. Nice. Woo! So my jerk worm is just about jerked out, so I'll do a quick uh, bait swap all of this, and I'll show you sort of how I do it compared to the sluggo. Pretty, pretty darn similar. Uh, in fact, I even still have my uh, Texposer sluggo hook from, from last time. So I'll get rid of this guy and we'll get a new jerkworm out. This is the uh, six inch model in a really cool color. It's almost, uh, it's sort of like a black shad, but it's got a little bit of blue fleck in it as well. So very interesting. So basically this thing, pretty similar to a sluggo. It's got, instead of a, just sort of the two slits, it's got some ribs here to give you an idea of where to hook it. And it's also got a nice slit on the top, which really does hide that hook well. Uh, so first things first, I'll come in at the nose at 90 degrees, go about a quarter inch back, and then come out the bottom, right in the very bottom of the bait. Uh, from there, just like a sluggo, I'll slide it up the hook. And then what I like to do is pre-measure, sort of where this thing is gonna come across. And as I'm holding this now, I can see that's gonna be basically at the last, second to last rib. And I'm gonna go in at 90 degrees, flip it and come straight out the top, right in that little hook slit. Now what's nice about the jerk worm that I'm finding is look at that. You cannot see that hook point at all. However, it's not exposed at all. It's literally just open right there. So that's awesome. All right, it's getting hot. So before I take off my jacket, I do wanna do a little spot on the baits that we're fishing with today. So first off, we'll start off with the original, and that was this one, the classic Sluggo. This is a six inch in one of my favorite colors, the Chartreuse Pepper. And here's the actual model that we were doing some damage on last time. This is, I think, called um, Smoke Blue Shad. And ironically enough, after I blew through about six of these last trip, I figured out that this is a discontinued color. So I'll have to save those as best I can. But the Sluggo itself, it is a pretty simple looking bait. It's got a flat head on it. It's got sort of a, uh, a hull or a boat shaped bottom. And it's got this little segment here, which I think helps it have a little bit of movement, but also kind of tells you where to put that hook. So I guess imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And when this thing came out, just about everybody and their uncle had a version of the soft plastic jerk bait. So one of my favorite little companies that I haven't featured a ton, do you have a fish? <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't featured a ton on this channel is culprit. Generally speaking, I'm fishing with a culprit worm. I've even got some sticky worms that I'm gonna have to get out there before too long. But there were two baits that came from culprit sort of in response to the sluggo. The first one is this. This is called the jerk worm. And this is, I think, a six inch model. And I'll show you one of these out of the package. This is probably most similar to the sluggo in shape, um, but maybe not performance. And the other one, is this bait which is called the bait darter and i don't know why they came out with two of these almost identical baits in a lot of ways uh but for whatever reason they did and the bait darter is a five incher so the lure that brandon has been fishing with most of the day is this one this is the bait darter 
really resembles a slug. It's pretty thick, and as you can see, it doesn't even have a ton of wiggle. Interestingly enough, this one probably fishes most similar to a sluggo. It doesn't have a ton of really snaky action. It's just got some really nice, sharp jerks to it. Um, the bait darter does have sort of a whale-shaped tail, which is interesting, and it's got a belly slot at the top where you can hide a hook. Now, the one that I've been fishing with mostly is this one, which is the jerk worm. And you can see right out of the gates, it's definitely a little bit more wormy than the bait darter. It's got more of a curve to it, and it definitely has more of a snaky action in the water. Um, I would say that this thing, you know, at fast speeds resembles a sluggo. At slow speeds, um, yeah, it's more like a floating worm, to be honest with you. But pretty similar to the bait darter, it's got a sort of a whale-shaped tail there. It's got a couple of ribs to show you where to place the hook and a slot at the top, which I actually really like. So we're gonna keep fishing this little stretch. Unfortunately, the troll motor died. I don't know what happened. So I do have an oar, so I guess I could, uh, you know, row it old school, and we might do that a little bit. It's a shame because the overcast, the weather is just amazing. The fall fish, there are definitely some nice little wolf packs of bass cruising the shoreline. Uh, so let's get on it. I know we try to do things old school here, but this is, uh... <laughs> I guess this is why they have you uh, keep an oar in your, in your boat, huh? Completely reroute their whole traffic, like all this stuff. That's oh, God. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a big fish. Oh, man. Stay pig, baby. <laughs> Oh, that hit so big. Wow. Sounds good. Come on, buddy. <laughs> All right. Come on in here. Come here, come here. Come here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Really good time. Really good time. <laughs> there we All go. Right, Look right. at that beautiful fish. Woo. Woo. I swear he jumped out of the water and hit that jerk worm before it even touched down. Oh my goodness, he almost jumped and caught that. That is another really nice, really nice fish. Oh man. <laughs> I need to just stay on the phone. Of course, right while Brandon is out there on the phone. So thanks, good buddy. You got it. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> at least I wasn't screaming like five pounder for this one, so that's good. I had an idea it wasn't that big. So I gotta admit, one of the things that my uncles do pretty regularly when they are fishing for chain pickerel is they do have a trolling motor, but a lot of the times when they are navigating a really shallow, quiet creek, they will use the oar. And it's interesting, but back when I used to try to cast net men Hayden uh, from a bass boat, I would chase them around with a trolling motor, and even on low, even on a constant setting, those bait fish run from the sound of the trolling motor. So there might be something to it. Now, on a windy day, um, you just couldn't do this, but where we are now, as you can see, it is like glass calm here. This is working out perfectly. I mean, maybe if it's like two feet longer, it'll work out perfectly, but, but all said and done, um, not a bad way to navigate really shallow, bassy water. It snuck one in, man. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Little bonus fish. Oh, there you go. There you go. There he is. No way. There he is. <laughs> nice. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> See, I actually followed the... Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I was... Oh, man. Well, I've got a jerk worm in my camera. Uh, <laughs> oh. I was so close to saying that I followed the directions on the package perfectly that time. Um, where I waited and set the hook. <laughs> he just jumped it off. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> uh, well, well, was, he, was he chasing it? 
he was chasing it and then he hit it and then uh you know i retroed it well anyway bass and buds it's been a fun day on the lake throwing some jerk worms and bait darters for some full largemouth bass definitely drop a comment down below let me know what baits you want to see us fish with next time we are out on bass drop i've got a feeling if this weather holds that old bluetooth brandon and i are going to be out here probably pretty soon Till next time, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Man, that was a bummer. <laughs> Let's keep the carpet side up. So what what that is is uh fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to retro bass.